still there. If you love photography, why not have spells that promise to dwell in informative capsules that are not just technically opulent, but promise to take you to its aesthetics, conservation, nature and much more? Welcome to the brand new channel, Jerome Live. Our very first segment starts with the ace lensman Praveen P. Mohandas. Praveen is a practicing architect, an acute nature lover, and hence a chronicler. He had been the voice of the space and time beyond the frames that he documents and has traveled and photographed extensively. He is the director of projects at the Photo Muse, a museum of photography in Kerala, and has been the recipient of innumerable honors. His works have been published across national and international print versions of dailies and periodicals. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pleasure to invite you to a virtual interview with Praveen, wherein he interacts with some of the most admired and eminent personalities of the industry, like Dhritiman Mukherjee, Dr. Unikrishan Polikal, Professor Vinay Kumar, Mr. Dilip Andhikar, to name a few. Enjoy this session and kindly send in your valuable suggestions. If you loved it, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you and stay safe. Take care. In your personal opinion, do you think there has happened a considerable advancement or progress or a substantial change in the practice of wildlife photography from what it has been, say, three decades ago to what is happening now? Advancement in technology has definitely uh, affected uh, the way photography is, uh, at least wildlife photography is being practiced uh, in the recent times. I don't mean uh, about uh, the technological development in camera or lenses or uh, other photography related things, but then uh, the technological revolution that happened in the invention of drones, uh, certain uh, uh, cameras like uh, uh, action cameras or, or even for that matter uh, laser technologies, uh, optic fibers and things like that. Uh, cameras has become, become nanotechnology for that matter. All these have helped uh, photographers and wildlife filmmakers yes, uh, majorly in, in exploring uh, things in nature uh, from, from a very varied perspective. Uh, just take the example of a drone. Uh, earlier, earlier days, uh, photographers had to hire a helicopter or a microcraft and then fly over these places. Uh, things were risky. Uh, human life was put in risk in making a visual. Uh, all these things have been very easily being handled by uh, the help of drones uh, which could carry even a heavy camera uh, uh, and, and even uh, nanotechnology for that matter, making cameras very small and putting them into places where uh, human size cannot go inside. Uh, underwater cameras, uh, lighting and all, all those things. Uh, we, we could, we could uh, see breathtaking visuals with the help of these technologies. Uh, so definitely uh, over the time, uh, technology has supported uh, wildlife photographers in expressing things in, uh, in much varied uh, perspective. Tell me about the evolution that has happened in your work. Or in other words, where are you taking your work to? Evolution of uh, my photographic uh, journey in, in wildlife. Uh, I started uh, doing wildlife photography maybe in early uh, 2000 uh, during my college days in uh, Bangalore and uh, I was associated with a, a, a photography club called Youth Photographic Society and with the senior members of that club I went uh, to Bandipur uh, Tiger Reserve for the first time. That was my first hand experience with uh, uh, wildlife photography, even though I had uh, been doing photography for much longer time, but then those days it was all architecture and travel and uh, things like that. Uh, so my initial uh, approach to photography was like what whatever my, my uh, teachers have taught me of uh, documenting what is happening in front of you and waiting for a situation to happen and animal behaviors and uh, relationships between animal and its environment and storytelling and things like that. Uh, 
these these were inputs that i got from my uh, my uh, tutors and then i continue to uh, do as such uh, the 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 same thing but then as time passed i i started ev- 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 uh, ev- like uh, looking into my emoji images and then uh, i was i was i asked a question to myself what, what what how different is your image from the ones which has been made by your seniors uh, hardly any difference uh, other than few technical errors which we uh, make during our uh, uh, initial days uh, things were almost the same uh so i thought i thought okay you know i have to take it uh, to a different uh, uh level and then and then by that time uh, digital happened and then i started pursuing the same similar kind of things started documenting with with much more control uh, using the digital camera and things like that but again uh, my approach slowly started uh, shifting from from waiting for a, a rare event to happen and uh, looking deeper into uh, relationships between uh, the animal and its surroundings uh, animal in its l- uh, landscape has been a m- uh, major uh, aspect which i have been uh, working over the years uh, various habitats and various kind of relationships uh, not only about just immediate habitat but uh, macro and micro level uh, habitats influences of weather uh climatic situations in uh, uh, different parts of the day different parts of the seasons uh, these kind of relationships and how animals cope up with these kind of uh, uh, situation or maybe i respond to these situations as time passed my my journey became more of uh, monochromatic i ventured into black and white wildlife photography and then my uh, images started becoming uh uh, uh colorless uh, like my my shades became black white and gray uh, i started uh, expressing things much more emotionally and pictorially uh, during those days uh, i was i, I was uh, I, i i never waited for for a, a very rare moment to occur and then try to create an image but then i started making images which which are more emotionally connected connecting to me uh, and trying to get a meaning which is much more uh, different than what you just see immediately uh, as time passed again this expression changed and i started experimenting with the uh, uh, with uh, i made wildlife as a uh, raw material and started making work image uh, images uh, which kind of uh, resonated uh, with our own emotions and our own life Uh, situations in our life started uh, translating into images or visuals uh, majorly made by uh, ingredients from uh, wildlife uh, i i uh, there were there were situations where i uh, avoided you uh, uh, avoided ha- having the presence of uh, wild animals in my picture and then looked for surroundings and then relationships ag- again between the surroundings like the presence of a, of of an animal without its own physical presence like trails left by and uh, scratch marks and things like that so i started documenting uh, uh, wildlife from from a very very different uh, perspective in that way uh, later on i also started uh, uh, taking an idea in mind and then start looking for visuals uh, which were uh, which which i can uh, thread along uh, this uh, idea and make a, a series of images and then make a story out of it uh, the story by itself is not very narrative but then uh, it it is about visual connect- connectivity between the visuals i made and then telling a di- totally different stories i started making diptychs where two images were combined together and then uh, try to get a meaning out of it which is uh, which is quite different from what uh, those images individually meant so my my uh, my expression of uh, wildlife photography changed over time and and it it is uh, evolving and evolving and evolving uh, to um, newer uh, uh, situations or newer expressions he is pictorialism blocking the flow of indian nature photography to the next level pictorialism to my understanding uh, is an uh, a, p- a period of artwork uh, or, or in in painting and photography and things like that which happened in the early part of uh, 20th century mm, and as modernism came pictorialism died out and and new expressions of uh, 
and new movements uh, came in. If, if we evaluate uh, Indian uh, uh, wildlife photography as such, I am very doubtful if even pictorialism did uh, uh, reach uh, India. Uh, because Indian wildlife photography was always about uh, documenting uh, its varied species and various habitats and things like that. Again, uh, as, in, uh, as our uh, parks were opened uh, more into tourism, a lot of uh, foreign photographers did come to India. But then these photographers majorly came for uh, the enigmatic tiger. So it was, it was Indian wildlife photography was always surrounded by uh, images of tigers. Uh, it, it, we know how difficult it is to, uh, to spot a tiger in the wild. So uh, most of uh, the Indian wildlife photography is about spotting something. So it was majorly about these uh, recording of sightings or spottings of uh, these tigers or other uh, lesser known animals. Mm, off late there has been a lot of uh, young photographers who have been slightly trying to push uh, this limit uh, beyond uh, lesser known animals and things like that. But that wasn't the case uh, in earlier part. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't analyze this from the perspective of isms that evolved over the time in wildlife photography in India. Uh, I don't know what is going to happen later, but, but definitely if we look at uh, what has been done till date, uh, I don't think even uh, pictorialism has reached here. Uh, even pictorialistic expressions have not been experimented uh, in Indian uh, wildlife photography. For more than half a century, India's wildlife photography has mostly been the practice of making beautiful pictures of animals. What do you think is your contribution to the practice of wildlife photography in India? Uh, I would like to look at it uh, this way. I, I feel it's okay that uh, pictorialism uh, is not practiced uh, in Indian wildlife photography, but but I definitely feel that there has to be a change in the way we approach uh, uh, wildlife as such, in at least in India. The things I, outside India is, is very different. There are a lot of photographers who have been experimenting very like with, with varied kind of ideas and concepts and type kind of visuals, uh, but uh, but here things are much more stagnant. Uh, I, but I feel at least the younger uh, generation photographers do push their own limit uh, to find in, in finding uh, new language, new way of expressing uh, wildlife beyond just uh, recording uh, sightings. Hi Praveen, how are you? Hope you are doing good. I wonder how you managed to you know, spend this pandemic and uh, lockdown period. Did you get time to possess any images from your archives? I think many photographers did that and I'm sure you have done it. Well, uh, let's come to the point. I'm so happy you are doing this session on behalf of Genome and I think the pressure to raise Two questions uh, to for your views on this particular segment of photography. The first question is that why do you think you know uh, people are you know especially new generation photographers not following uh, fine art or abstract photography as such? Could you please you know share your views on that? That's question number one. Then question number two. Okay, what is your tip? You know, to those who wanted to take up uh, abstract photography, okay, you can you can make it in you know five points that will be highly appreciated. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Praveen, and thank you, team, all the best. Uh, if we uh, look at uh, history of uh, arts or history of uh, photography, there has been various movements that has happened uh, across uh, various times. Uh, but what made uh, these changes was the social or the cultural uh, situation of that period uh, or the even for example, even for instance the political situation has actually influenced 
these uh, movements. But predominantly people were trying to uh, express themselves uh, through the medium of photography. Uh, so uh, there, are there are various uh, types of uh, expressions that people have been, or artists have been using uh, since the inception of uh, photography. Uh, be it pictorialism, be it modernism, or be it uh, cubism or in, uh, deconstructivism and a lot of things like that. Uh, so, um, I, I wouldn't uh, say uh, um, that uh, um, <coughs> fine art or abstract has an upper hand uh, in comparison to uh, documentary style. See, the, the purpose of an image uh, depends on what uh, uh, vision and what the photographer wants to convey uh, through his medium. So, some people uh, might uh, use a very documentary style. Some might work uh, subjects with a very abstract manner or very pictorialist manner or even um, uh, other, other way, ways of uh, expression. Uh, so it, uh, the, the predominant uh, character of, uh, uh, of every work should be based on what, is, uh, what the photographer or the artist wants to convey. Uh, so, um, I, I do not know if uh, it is uh, important to anal analyze or like segregate all these uh, various expression styles, uh, one uh, being on an upper hand and the other being down. Each, each, pers each image would uh, kind of represent uh, its, its own language in which it has been uh, in made. Coming to the second part of the question, uh, I would uh, uh, look at it this way. Um, uh, uh, people who are interested in photography uh, ten, tend to spend a lot of time uh, on the technical aspects of uh, photography more these days. Uh, one, one of the major reasons is the amount of information that we get through internet and uh, uh, social media and things like that are all majorly on the technical aspects of photography. But uh, keeping, uh, it is it's very important that we need to get a good hold on the techniques and uh, how things are being done and the all, all other, uh, the, the very technical or scientific aspects of photography. It is also important to get a better knowledge on uh, the art side of photography uh, because uh, photography has been considered uh, as an art in the uh, in recent times, uh, it, it's it's as important as uh, painting or sculpture or installation uh, or even other collaborative kind of uh, work. Uh, why why we have to get into get into more on the art side is uh, it it opens up our uh, expression to multiple levels. Uh, we we don't get uh, restricted to just the technical perfection of an image, but also to the aesthetic side of it. One important factor that uh, I would say uh, everybody to uh, consider is to look into history. Uh, photography has uh, only a 150, less than a 150 years of uh, age, but uh, visual language has been there uh, since man uh, started living in caves, uh, from cave paintings to uh, later on um, um, the, during the medieval period, the, the paintings and sculptures done on palaces and uh, uh, churches and things like that, and later on uh, various art movements and things like that. So uh, there, is, there has been a very, a very continuous process and continuous eva uh, evolution of, of visual medium as such. So it is, it is very important to understand what triggered these uh, changes uh, over the period of time. Uh, we also get uh, to know what our uh, predecessors have done and kept. Uh, we, we kind of uh, take up a project and we, we might think, okay, this is out of the world project, but 20 years back or 30 years back, somebody else would have done it. So what, what re relevance do we have? He has already done a project similar to this uh, and then we, we are just changing the technology in with, with which we are recording it. That, that, that should not be the, the, the uh, perspective from which uh, next generation of photographers should approach photography, uh, have a better knowledge of uh, history, uh, what, what created these evolutions over a period of time and then try to push. Uh, photography is a medium which has been rewritten 
uh, uh, very frequently these days. The uh, photograph is not just a, uh, a print on paper uh, anymore. Uh, there are various mediums of expressions like um, uh, social media and uh, internet based and, and, and many more. We do not know what is going to come uh, uh, in future, but it, it's, it's very important that we uh, cope up and we, we, we make ourselves ready for all those changes. But uh, being ready is not just about the techniques, it is also about uh, the art side and, and uh, the expression. And I would, I would uh, stress on one point to have uh, to every, every uh, new uh, comer into photography is to have his personal voice being uh, uh, reflected through his picture. Because the world is looking at uh, what does he has to say, not that what I wanted to see. That is not the approach which uh, uh, the world is at now. Because one major reason for this is the abundance of images that come in uh, front of us uh, every minute. Uh, millions of millions of images come uh, in front of us for us to see. So how do we stand out? It is only our personal vision, your personal voice is going to bring you out. Hey Praveen, how are you? So my question to you is, if you are a jury in a competition, how do you decide one photo is better than other? So I just want to know the parameters and the logics behind your selection. Thank you. I'll try to answer this question from the perspective of uh, an image evaluation. I have a, uh, I basically have a, a six uh, stage uh, criteria for evaluating an image. Uh, it, it would start with uh, uh, vision, uh, visualization, form, uh, light, color and emotion. So what, uh, when, when I see an image, uh, I would look at uh, what, what is the kind of um, vision that the photographer wants to convey uh, to us. Uh, and and what is his vision of the world and how he looks at life and things like that. Uh, when it comes to visualization, I would look consider the aspects of composition and how what are the aspects that uh, the artist used in uh, in in visualizing that vision that he has uh, using various aspects of uh, focal length and position of camera and viewpoints and. Uh, selection of subjects and placement of subjects and things like that. Uh, the third one would be uh, the, how he is interpreted shapes and form, how he has brought in that relationship between these uh, elements within, within the frame. We see the world in three-dimensional perspective and then we break down that into a two-dimensional perspective and that's how we, we, we compose a frame. So what is the relationship that he is able to bring with in terms of shapes and form and uh, texture. Uh, the fourth one would be uh, how he has used light. Uh, is it in, to an advantage or is this the right time to shoot and um, what, what are the special qualities of that available light at that part of the time and things like that. Uh, the fifth one would be on uh, how is color used. Uh, whether it's a black and white photograph or whether it's a color photograph and even if it, if it is in the if it's in the black and white thing how is tonal range handled and things like that and if it is color what is the uh, how is how well uh, the colors were balanced and uh, how nicely it has been organized within the two dimensional frame and the sixth one would be uh, emotion what what is the emotional content uh, that the that the picture has on to on to uh, myself or to the viewer uh, what are the aspects that that emotionally connects us to that particular image or else it could be the wow factor that the image can uh, portray. So these are the six criteria that I would uh, use to analyze a photograph, uh, photograph it at, at, at various levels, whether it is my own image or whether I am looking at somebody else's image or when I am judging for a, uh, for a contest. Many a times the problem with judging is it comes comes down to comparison. Suppose there are similar images of the same idea or same concept, then then it becomes comparison between those three. We are not looking at at a very global level of 
analysis at, at that point of time. We will be just looking at just that three images and what are the advantages and disadvantages each image has based on these six criteria that I, I would evaluate on. Uh, I would give a, a higher mark for a, a vision a per person has, maybe his technical side might be a little bit down, but how important is that vision, how, how, how differently he, he portrays the world, what is his inner voice and things like that. Some picture might be technically more perfect and uh, vision might be a slightly low. So it, it, it depends upon that comparison between similar kind of images. That is how I personally look at uh, images during a judging. Hello Praveen, this is Ravi Mahadevan and there are a couple of questions that I always wanted to ask uh, someone like you and uh, as I would summarize it, I mean uh, the first question is uh, we all know the agony of the planet and how the wildlife has changed during the last decade. Now, has the predictability factor of the documentary maker gone for a toss because of the changes we have brought in to the planet? Like for example, the Amazon is not Amazon as we knew it, or maybe the poles are no more the places they used to be. I mean, we have been reading about uh, the agony of the polar bears or maybe the Arctic fox, and uh, the forest fires, the bushfires in Australia, and how what they have been doing to Amazon. I mean, all these things have been affecting the wildlife in one way or other, and I'm sure that this would have had its effect in our country too. I mean, how alarming is the situation in India, and how do you rate it when in comparison with the other hotspots of the world? My first-hand experience in uh, places outside uh, India uh, is very limited because I have not traveled much across uh, the world. Uh, my, all my travels have been basically uh, within uh, Indian uh, landscapes and Indian forests. Uh, <clears throat> but situation here is also not very different. Uh, the effect of uh, global warming and things like that has started affecting our wildlife too. Uh, one of the major uh, problems that I find in our country is uh, habitat loss. Uh, most of the forests are being uh, surrounded by agriculture land and every day there is an encroachment of agriculture land towards uh, wildlife areas uh, which is actually uh, decreasing the area of our wildlife reserves. Uh, uh, straight away there is a conflict between wildlife and uh, uh, humans because of uh, this encroachment. If you look at the kind of agricultural areas that come, there is abundance of water by irrigation, artificial irrigation and things like that. Animals always look for um, easy food and water. So when uh, they come down to places where they easily get food and water, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, unfortunately agricultural land. So we call, the, call it as uh, crop raiding and things like that. But we are actually encroaching into their territory and decreasing their space. This has been a major uh, issue. Uh, a lot of places have uh, mining uh, in, in, in areas which are very close to uh, um, tiger reserves and things like that. Definitely this is going to affect the equilibrium of that whole ecosystem and the whole area as such. Uh, uh, change in climate, like uh, change of uh, uh, seasons and uh, un uh, un uh, un uh, rains which are like um, uh, exponentially high than usual patterns is again making uh, a lot of changes in the landforms, uh, which is also affecting wildlife and, and foraging lands for them. Uh, another major issue which I have seen is a contamination of uh, rivers and lakes. Uh, most of these uh, uh, ri uh, rivers originate from the uh, forests and and flow through uh, many of the river reserve areas. And with and it it is it is this water which most of these animals use as their life. But then uh, more and more factories and uh, tourism areas coming close to these forest areas is a kind of contaminating these waters and which is again affecting them, the animals and, and, and their health. This is, this is one of the major uh, things that I've identified within India. 
My second question is, uh, watching photographers on a mission, I find a couple of strategies that almost fox us as viewers. One is the sense of composition that could fail if your predictability goes wrong. The final picture may not actually serve as the product that you wanted, in spite of being at the right place at the right time. How do you foresee such an eventuality during your shoot and did you have to compromise on any occasion? We have always heard that uh, wildlife photography is about uh, luck uh, and also we have heard that it is uh, uh, we are at the mercy of nature and things like that. But then uh, my, I, I would like to approach it from a very different uh, aspect. Uh, my, my approach to uh, photography is not majorly dependent on, on, on the factor of luck alone. Uh, I, when I am uh, in, in a situation and, and I, I look for uh, elements within uh, that situation and then try to bring in relationships between elements uh, in, in any situation for that matter. That is the approach that I have been taken, I, I, that I have been, I have been uh, which I have taken for a, a longer period of time. Uh, because when, when the moment you, we, we rely more on luck, uh, we are restricting ourselves in identifying lot many more things uh, which are more important or, or, or even uh, important uh, other than that luck factor. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't always wait for something uh, very rare to happen uh, and things like that. But uh, all said and done, uh, we have to be uh, technically, emotionally and spiritually uh, be uh, very much available uh, to identify uh, all these situations that come, across, come in front of us and then interpret uh, all these uh, situations in, in our own way. Uh, that, that is the approach that I have been uh, doing uh, for quite some time now. Uh, my, my process of when I'm in a situation and, and I find these combinations of uh, interrelationships of uh, subjects or shapes or emotions and things like that, I relay uh, majorly on my instinct uh, for a very, uh, co from a very compositional perspective. I don't, I don't analyze it with all the theories of composition and things like that. Even though I have gone through the, uh, the learning process of all, all uh, theoretical uh, compositional principles and things like that. But then most of the time it is my instinct that I, I work on. Uh, to finding uh, a, a, a composition or arriving at a composition as such. All these responses uh, towards the situation said and done, uh, our past experience uh, of, of similar or different situations is always there behind our uh, mind, uh, which actually uh, works in, in that situation, in identifying the possibilities and things like that. Uh, that, that analysis would have happened actually from from, uh, from a mistake which we have done uh, earlier uh, and then trying to correct it later on. Uh, maybe uh, on, on field situation there are many things that can go wrong, uh, uh, n number of things can go wrong and things do go wrong. Uh, but worrying about going wrong will only shut you from finding a newer possibility uh, or finding a new uh, way of expressing uh, uh, things uh, in, in, in our own uh, way. Uh, so we, we have we have to be uh, personally available uh, to uh, to utilize uh, all that that uh, situation that arises uh, than than just just waiting for something to happen uh, out of uh, thin air. The third question that I wanted to ask is the adage that we always hear is the more near you are the better the intimacy. Being near is not an everyday opportunity for the wildlife photographer or explorer, if uh, I understand it right. Uh, personally speaking, a closer wide-angle intrusion, if I may use that term, would produce, uh, well, uh, a la um, NG exploration pictures, more breadstopping visuals than the ones that are brought near with a telephoto lens. How often do we get this unconventional thought process to realize itself? Wildlife photographers are like paparazzi in the wild. We are intruders into the life of animals in their habitat. That habitat doesn't belong to human beings. So uh, approaching uh, wildlife with a, a wide-angle uh, lens is not always a very comfortable situation for us as well as for wildlife. 
even if you make a breathtaking wildlife image with a wide angle lens the presence of us is always evident in that picture my approach to uh, photography or nature photography is slightly different again here uh, i use very uh, i use wide angle lenses uh, very little i always like to work with long teles and maintain a very comfortable distance between me and the animal i want the animal to be as comfortable as possible in its atmosphere uh, i would like to make images uh, with with that perspective and then still making uh, an emotional connection uh, with 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 the uh, with the surrounding and with the with with uh, elements in the surrounding and uh, and and also a kind of communication with me uh so even even when uh, we we whatever wide angle images uh, that we can make uh, and still make it very breathtaking can only be done with uh, a remote uh, a triggered camera where our presence is not a major factor uh, and and many a times these cameras are camouflaged and uh, placed inside boxes and animals don't feel its presence uh, instantly but again in even in that situation uh, we have very little control over creating something spontaneous we are always again at the mercy of that animal to play come to there and then the uh, the infrared beam get cut and then the camera triggers that's the only way to make so our control again uh, is uh, very limited in situations like that to go beyond uh, the obvious uh, visuals that we can make uh from that situation uh, we don't have the freedom of uh, in, uh, 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 interpreting uh, things in a very different manner we we we, we cannot use our intuitions and uh, we uh, it, it it's it's more or less a very very technical uh, aspect of looking at uh, compositions and things like that definitely i agree to the fact that there are breathtaking images uh, that are made uh, with with close encounters to the animals but then uh i i would like to look at it from a very uh, distant perspective hi praveen greetings i have a couple of questions for you i'm sure your answers will be of interest not only to me but also to many other experienced photographers as well as those who are relatively new to the field to my questions now number 1 i know that you started photography in the old days of film use before it became digital now with the proliferation of the digital medium and mobile phones with their cameras there has been an astonishing creation of images far greater than there used to be in the old days what do you feel about this has quantity also resulted in an increase in quality if yes in what ways if not what could be the reasons and how can we set it right number 2 when i first made your acquaintance many years ago i saw in you an excellent wildlife photographer whose images were right up there with the best in the world however in recent years you seem to have abandoned color altogether and your output is mainly in monochrome what is the reason behind this u turn consider a person with access to the most advanced wrist watches and one day he suddenly says that he would henceforth use only a pocket watch of the type used by his grandfather to me the situation here seems very similar what do you gain by discarding color information from your images further many of your recent pictures make use of infrared photography what special advantage does this confer beyond the obvious that's all thank you photography has always been a very technical medium uh, if you look at uh, during its initial days uh, emulsions were unstable and scientists worked towards making them very stable uh, emulsion Uh, and uh, later on uh, when mechanization started uh, portable cameras and portable film uh, came and today we have reached the um, stage of uh, digital photography and what next we don't not know but uh, if we look at uh, the purpose of photograph it was all the same uh, from its initial days till now 
it has not changed over the period of time uh, it was only that technological variation or technological evolu evolution that kept on uh, progressing uh, as time passed uh, but if we look at the number of images that has been made in recent times it has been exponentially high uh, in comparison to the number of images made from its inception thanks to digital technology things have made become much easier uh, we all know that uh, the it, it it's uh, making a photograph is no more a very difficult process uh, any digital camera can uh, even for a beginner can can get a proper uh, photograph made but if you look at the conceptual part or the idea behind a photograph it was difficult then it is difficult now it is also going to be difficult again uh, as the number of images uh, increased it has become much more difficult uh, to make our image stand out conceptually technical perfection has always been improved uh, it has been it, it uh, we we get multiple uh, uh, technological supports to kind of create uh, what we wanted to do uh, but uh, it is very important that Uh, we look into the conceptual part also uh, which 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 i would say uh, just evolved ev evolved over time that evolution has uh, is very much connected uh, to our cultural changes in our lifestyle uh, we found new expressions uh, uh, over the period of time so if 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 we look at uh, technology as well as the art part of or, or the conceptual part of photography both have evolved in the same process i wouldn't say uh, the larger number of images created now has brought down the conceptual character of a photograph we have found new meanings for photograph uh, maybe there is a larger sector of uh, 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 repetitive images which is being made but it it those images don't uh, stay in the test of time it is only that conceptually uh, strong images that would uh st uh, stay ahead of its uh, or, or go along or, or along this time as i said earlier uh, there has been uh, an evolution in the meaning and the process of photography uh, similarly uh, my journey in photography also had the similar kind of uh, evolution uh, over the past time because it's 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 more than 25 years that i've been doing into being in photography um my purpose and uh, what i wanted to express uh, through photograph also changed over the time um if, if coming to you the example that you would uh, uh, you suggested on on or you mentioned on uh, using the watch uh, for me watch is only an object for looking time whether it is a latest digital watch or whether it is a grandfather's old watch my purpose of uh, the watch is only to look at uh what is the time uh, similarly for me uh, camera is only a tool whether it is the latest uh, camera or whether it is an old film camera uh, i work bo with both these things in the same way uh, but i i i all i always give uh, stress on to the point of what i wanted to communicate then what tool i'm using i don't want my tool to overpower Uh, my expression or my uh, way of working yes i do use the latest technology uh, to my advantage uh, i could do things much easier other than that nothing has changed i all i i always like uh, experimenting trying new things new expressions bringing in new meaning to my photograph again in infrared photography is also one of those experiments which i have been doing but ultimately it is i always make sure the te the technological part of my process don't go beyond a point uh, because i always spend more time conceptualizing my work than the technological part coming to uh, black and white photography i uh, started my journey uh, from uh, doing black and white photography um, and when i uh, went for my for my studies in architecture i did not have access to Uh, a dark room uh, and slowly i had to uh, give up black and white and start doing color and uh, during my our study days we had to do a lot of architectural documentation and things like that and uh, which which had to be done in 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 uh, color uh, and uh, early 2000 digital came in and then i uh, got uh, myself into digital photography and still continue to do uh, color for for a longer time but 
as time passed i kind of evaluated my own images and i found that there is a repetition of what i've been doing and i i thought at a point that why not i try black and white again because i still got back the control which i used to have in the process of making an image uh, which i had during my black and white time uh, but i could do everything in the uh, in the uh, in a light ro- uh, light room i don't mean adobe light room but a room with light i don't need a black and da- dark room uh, so um, when i when i went deeper and deeper into black and white photograph i find of kind of realized that this this process is very complicated and i need to spend a lot of time in in understanding the nuances and finer aspects of uh, black and white uh, photography and editing and things like that uh, from from uh, identifying the subject and uh, interpreting its exposures and uh, the how i convert them into black and white all all had various levels of uh, complexities Uh, so i spent more time making more black and white images and when i also looked at uh, uh, at an international level the number of black and white photographers doing by life was much less so i found of found that okay this is getting to a, an identity level and black and white became an uh, identity for me in the later stage um, uh, that that's the process part of making black and white images but then uh, when you look at the conceptual part Uh, i was more interested in 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 uh, representing a situation uh, or connecting to a situation emotionally using shape texture and light uh, the information of color to me many a times uh, does not uh, take you beyond a certain level but holds you back because of the colorfulness of color uh, taking away that that layer of color would would uh, make you engage with that situation emotionally much deeper just main just with three elements of uh, shape texture uh, and and light also uh, giving me uh, the color palette of black white and grays the suggestion that i would like to give to uh, uh, friends who would like to come into nature photography uh, newly uh, nature photography is a field uh, which needs extensive uh, study on uh, behavior of animals and uh, type of animals their habitat their feeding behaviors their lifestyle all those things uh, it's it's not like uh, starting uh, um, uh, street photography uh, buy a camera get some knowledge on the techniques of the camera and then walk on a street and start responding to situations that you come up or like uh, a festival photography or a travel photography you keep traveling and uh, try to make images uh, this is a, se- a sector of uh, uh, segment of photography wherein uh, it is very important to have uh, end up knowledge about uh, uh, natural history Uh, why i say this is um, if if you don't know uh, uh, where to look for a particular animal or a bird or or an insect uh, it is very difficult to uh, tell a story about that animal uh, see recording uh, a lot of people have been photographing uh, birds and animals and insects for a long time and uh, most of these animals have been recorded uh, over the time uh, it's no more important that you have to show how this animal looks like Uh, it is more important to show uh, the the uh, the uh, intricacies of their life the complexities of their life uh, and 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 uh, kind of personally uh, experience all these things and bring out an expression of your own there are many aspects that you have to look into but to look into all these aspects you have to have a very strong understanding uh, of uh, the life cycle and the life history uh, of all these animals uh so please give uh, equal importance to uh, learning the behavior and and understanding your subject and then try to uh, make an image i i agree to the fact that you need to have enough of technical knowledge of using various equipments and various lenses and various possibilities uh, that the technology can offer to us but understanding your subject is equally important mm-hmm.